What makes more power, shorty headers on a V6 or long tubes? Let's find out. Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder, and as always, welcome to the channel. Today we're looking at a 4.3 liter. We're going to do some performance testing, long tube headers and shorty headers and whatnot. We're going to take a look at changes in air fuel ratio. But the first thing we need to answer, hey, will this motor even run? I bought this 4.3 liter from the guys at West Tech Performance. This motor has been sitting for years and years and years. And as it turns out, it's a motor that's never even been run. It's a brand new one off of the assembly line, but will it run? Let's hear it now. That sounds awesome. So obviously the answer to that question is yes, it does run, but how well do shorty headers work? How well do long tube headers work? And this one's going to be a surprise. What does it do to air fuel? Let's check it out. Okay guys, let's jump right in and find out whether or not the 4.3 liter that I bought from the guys at West Tech is even going to run. And because we have a dyno curve right here, obviously, spoiler alert, the answer is yes, it did in fact run, but not without a bunch of work. And this was a motor that I bought, as I said, from the guys at West Tech Performance, but it was not a complete motor. It was basically a long block. It was missing a number of things, things that I needed to, you know, buy and reproduce. And so the major things that this was missing, it had no induction system at all. It had none of the fuel injection set up on it. It was basically just the long block, as I said, stock heads, the rockers and everything were there, but it was missing valve covers it was missing any sort of induction system like the intake manifold, also a distributor in this case, um, and it was also missing the oil filter adapter. Luckily for me, a lot of these things, I could just go over to the wrecking yard and get them and source them and then put them on. The few things that I did have to buy, I had to buy an intake manifold, which in this case, we're gonna go ahead and take a look. I, brought, I bought an Edelbrock dual plane aluminum intake manifold. It was an Edelbrock 2519 carbureted intake manifold. I also installed a Holley carburetor, a 650 Brawler carburetor. It is a BR67318 for those guys looking for the part number on that. Um, I also got some uh, shorty headers for this from Headman, and we got an MSD distributor designed for the six cylinder along with wires and plugs and oil and all that stuff. So we ordered the most of that stuff from the guys at Summit Racing. So we got a Holly carburetor, Edelbrock, we got the Headman headers. I also bought a set of long tube headers and we're gonna see a comparison here. But we were able to put this thing all together and get it up on the dyno. And uh, before putting it up there, I did what we always do. We put the oil in, put the filter on, put a drill in, spun it, uh, spun the oil pump up to get oil to everything before we started it. Now, this particular motor was basically brand new. As I said, it came off of the assembly line. The guys from West Tech actually got it from a deal that they got from the guys at the Chevy race shop. So this thing was essentially brand new, much like the 305 motor that I got from them on the tune port setup when we were comparing the 5 liter 305 tune port motor to the 5 liter 3024, another video that I have up, you guys can take a look at that. But this motor, as I said, brand new motor, so uh, we put all of these things on there and got it running. But before we tell you about the results, let's go ahead and let's just take a look and see the motor run, because we all want to hear it run. Okay, guys, now that we've taken a look at, uh, we actually got to hear it run. We got the V6, so we did get it up and running. It's all fine. You know, it had oil pressure, and so we knew it was, we knew it was good. So I, we put on the, the Edelbrock intake manifold, the 650 Brawler carburetor, which is a, um, a double pumper and not a vacuum secondary. We put on the MSD V6 distributor, wires, plugs, all this stuff, and we got our filter uh, adapter set up, and we installed first the Headman Shorty headers, and then we ran two and a half inch exhaust lengths of uh, of exhaust section after the shorty headers because they seemed to fit fairly well. We had problems with the long tube headers, which I'll show you. And so we, we wanted to do a comparison between the shorty headers 
and exhaust extensions. And then the long tube headers, because I was hoping that the long tube headers would show big power gains. And we saw something quite surprising here. But run with the shorty headers. And we obviously dialed in the jetting and the timing on our 4.3 liter. But run in this manner, as you saw, <coughs> excuse me, on the video. This little V6 produced 230.7 horsepower out here at like 5,000 RPM. And peak torque was up in the 288 to 290 foot-pounds, depending on where we're starting it. We loaded this thing in at like 2,300 RPM. This thing obviously designed mostly for torque production, although the carbureted manifold allows it to run fairly well. So this is with our shorty header. So let me show you what happens when we put on our long tube headers. And this was quite surprising to me. So here are the long tube headers. And I'm going to go ahead and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and label these. So you can see actually oddly enough, and we don't ever see this happen on our long tube header versus shorty header. The shorty headers did better down low and then they did worse in the middle, <laughs> and then they did a little better on the top, which we don't ever see with a long tube header configuration. What I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and... There we go. Okay, so now it's a little easier to see, and once again, I'll label these. So in the in the initial load in from like 2400 out to 3400 rpm the shorty header actually did better than the long tube which was very surprising but i'm going to show you we can figure out whether or not this is the case but i'm going to show you the big changes in air fuel ratio but uh, down low it looked like the shorty headers were better and we tried various things to change this but on this test, <laughs> the short hitters did better. But here in the middle, as we'll see, I'll go ahead and do another zoom here. So we can get an idea here on the zoom. I'll go ahead and move myself up here just a little bit. We can see here the long tube headers did better and they made more peak torque. You know, we were up to 285 foot pounds of torque. Uh, in in the middle portion there, 276. So, you know, we're looking at changing this thing, like the variance between the long tubes and the short tubes, depending on where they were better, was like eight to 10 foot pounds of torque is, is the variation. You can see, I'll go ahead and label these, that the long tube was doing better in the middle portion of the curve. And then if we look out at the top, I'll go ahead and move myself down again. We see that there's not a big change in power. You know, we're, we're talking about, let's see here, 221 versus 224. So like four, four foot pounds of torque or so, or four horsepower, four foot pounds of torque since we're out near the, out near the 5252 crossover point. So interestingly enough, long tubes versus shorties, the shorties did better down low. The long tubes did better in the middle, and then the shorties did a little bit better on the top. So go figure. I've never seen that before in long tube headers. Maybe it's something that's specific to these two headers that we tested, or maybe it's something specific to the V6 stuff, because this is the first V6 long tube header versus shorty header that I've ever tested. But now I want to take a look and show you what happened. We want to show you the effect of the header comparison on air fuel. Okay, guys, as you can see, the motor sounded awesome with the long tube headers on it and the, the U-bends. All of that worked out very well. You can see we had to forward face the headers um, and then wrap the U-bend around as, as, as described. As you can see from the video, the motor worked well, but there was a big change in air fuel ratio going from the shorty headers to the long tube headers. And I want to show you, this is our air fuel curve with the shorty headers. It started out at 11.8 or so, dropped down as rich as 11.3 rose as high as or as lean as 12.6 and then finished up here like 11.8 and i know what you're thinking richard that's a big variance in curve this is kind of typical of carbureted stuff and then it's way too rich you know down here at the 3200 rpm but here's an interesting thing here's what happened when we put the long tube headers on my mistake Here's how we put the long tube headers on. I'll go ahead and label these. But basically, with the long tube headers, the 
the motor was a lot richer. We didn't change anything. We didn't change the carburetor or the intake manifold or anything else. All we did was put the long tube header set up and the thing was a lot richer. It got down, it started out 11.2, dropped down as rich as 10.5. And then from the middle portion of the curve, they were basically the same for, you know, five or 600 RPM. And then with the headers, the airfield curve stayed fairly consistent, basically all the way out, only dropping from 12 to one down to about 11.6. So not a big variance there. And you can see that with the shorty headers, it got a lot leaner out there. So I know what you're thinking, well, Richard, you got you got to obviously tune that thing. And uh, that's exactly what I did. What I did here, I can show you. This is, a, this is a jet change with the long tube headers. What I did was just uh, take away three primary jets and three secondary jets, and we saw this kind of airfill change, which is typical of a jet change on these kind of combinations. The thing is, though, you would think that going from 10.5 to 1 to 11.5 to 1, or going from 11.3 up to 13.0, and it got a little bit lean up here, 13.3 and 13.4 to 1, which is a little leaner than we would probably run these. The interesting thing is that it made the same or less power when we took this fuel away, which doesn't make any sense. You'd think 10.5 to 1, we should be able to pick something up there. A lot of times, if it's in the, in the 11s or 12s, we don't see a big change in power, but here we didn't see any. In fact, it lost power through most of the curve. It actually did not like this, so it just goes to show you sometimes this is why we test and this is how we figure things out. The thing that I would like to do on this V6 is I wish that we had some really good camshafts to run in it. Comp has a few of these, and we're going to be running one of those cams coming up. We're going to do a spring upgrade. We'll put that cam in. But think about this. What if we had a couple of really cool things for the V6? Like, what if we had camshafts? Like, if you take a look at the video that I did on the LS V8 with the Brian Tooley cams. So we ran a stock cam. We ran a Truck Norris cam. We ran a hot rod cam. And then we ran red hot cams. So we've got, you know, like a stock cam, and then a 212 cam, and a 217 cam, and a 221 camshaft. And then, and then more exhausteration with, with a pretty good split there. If we had cams like that for the V6, I think we could see some really good, you know, power outputs. Not that the guys from Brian Tooley would be doing that, but if we had those kinds of cams, I think we could see really good gains. The other thing that I would like to see is we'd like to see some cylinder heads for this thing. Brodex makes some aluminum heads and we might be able to get a hold of those. But what if we had some affordable heads like an airflow research enforcer, that kind of thing? If we had some inexpensive bolt on heads, please let me know in the comments if you guys would like to see, you know, some affordable heads or some different camshafts for these a la you know the Brian Tooley Truck Norris cam or an airflow research head that kind of thing for the V6 is the market big enough for that kind of stuff let me know in the comments I'm Richard Holder please make sure like share subscribe ring the bell do all that stuff and I'll keep testing